Hi, Rich for 2RC Productions here today. This week's video is a new uh, little concept here. I was going to actually post another Kuma Mod video this week, but uh, I had a request from Michael Fullerton. He said that he was checking my channel pages and he couldn't find any videos on paintwork whatsoever. And the reason that is is because he's absolutely 100%. I don't have any on paintwork and I usually will show the paintwork, but I try to keep the camera as far away from the paint as I can. So today I'm going to put the case on the uh, camera so I don't have to worry about getting overspray on it. But I'm going to go through and give you a little bit of basic paint steps how I do it. And I'm definitely not sitting here and trying to act like I'm an expert or a pro at painting because I'm not. I mean, some of the guys, some of the stuff the you know guys put out is like, you know, incredible professional quality you know and i know they have uh the vinyl and stuff guys use vinyl and you know do all kinds of different things like that and my way of painting is old school way of painting my dad painted cars my uncle painted cars my other uncle painted cars i built models when i was a kid my dad still builds models and my dad taught me how to spray and how to do basic painting and paint car parts and stuff would have gone in that and uh, I've done airbrushing, but to me, for these type of kits, I like using the old school aerosol, mainly the testers paints, or I use Tamiya polycarbonate spray when I have to, uh, when I have to do a polycarbonate body. Um, I like using the can. I think it, it gives a real nice effect. I grew up using the can. That's why I like doing it. Um, to me, the airbrush is more work and cleaning and than it's worth, and a lot of times the result is not as good as I can get out of the can. You can get an incredible shine out of the can if you apply it right. And you can mess with the clear coats and, uh, you know, base coats and pearl colors and candy colors and metallic colors. And you could get some really cool effects. But keep in mind, flat colors are always easier to paint. Flat color. What I mean by flat is no metallic, no pearl, no candy. Those are the colors you want to start out with. Your basic white, your basic black, your basic red you know, yellow, whatever. When you start getting into the metallic and purple and candies and stuff, it adds a different element to it because you really have to be careful how you apply it so it looks even. And you have to be careful that you don't get runs because a lot of the paint, the pearl and the candy are more transparent and you're putting them on and you're thinking that, you know, they're not going on and you lay it on a little bit too heavy and you're done. So anyway, a couple of the vehicles, you've seen the stretch box numerous times. And I usually mess with striping and masking. And like this one, I went with the rat look. And this type of look takes a lot of a lot of different steps when you're doing it. You know, you have to apply colors on top of colors on top of colors and sand and apply more colors. The door is masked off. Uh, the top is a different color. The back's different color. This this has like uh, I forget now six or eight different colors on this one one van. So I'm going to move that out of the way. I'll show you the next one here. This is the lunch box. Now this was a um, this was a pearl color. This was a pearl pink. And you could see uh, the shine on it. You could see the metallic distributed really nice. That was a pearl color. When it's out in the sun, it's incredible. Usually a pearl color is a metallic, but it also has like a different, it's hard to explain, but when you look at this head on, it's, looks kind of it looks pink but then when you look at it from the side it has like a pinkish red it like almost changes like the color changes that's like a, almost like a purplish red coming out and then it's pink from another angle and that's what the pearl color does uh, this has a, the base coat and then it has the ghost stripes underneath which is another technique and you can see the black stripes masked off you can't really see them that well they kind of blend in but then when you look you know certain angles you can really notice it out in the sun, you can really notice it. That's a ghost stripe. People put ghost flames, scallops on their cars where it's not real, real drastic, but it's there and it looks cool. Uh, I've been working on this weathered look Unimog body. This was completely different than, than what I've done before because this is a polycarbonate body. So I started with a base, base coat white and I did the whole thing white from underneath and then I did some red from underneath for the striping and gray from underneath. And then after I got all the underneath done then i went and i painted the outside multicolors. i had blue on here i had purple on here white on the outside gray on the outside red on the outside and then you see like this is the 
white from underneath and then I sanded and sprayed and sanded and sprayed and then what I did was I actually tried this technique for the first time on here and it worked awesome. This was all real bright. If you noticed the other day when I had this up, it was all real bright, the photos. And then when I'm looking around the hobby room and I bought the PS31 smoke to smoke Ryan's windows and I just thought on a hunch, I'm like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dust this in certain areas and darken it up, see if it gives it that weathered look. And then I sanded the decals. I took fine sandpaper and I sanded the decals to kind of even them out so they didn't look so bright and standing out at you. They look like they've been on for a while and they're kind of old weathered looking, you know, a little beat up. And then I dusted this on. And then after I did that, I cleared it with, with the lacquer dull clear. So there's clear coat all over the outside of this. And then it blended everything in and it really turned out nice and gave it the effect that I wanted. So th there's a bunch of different styles. Then show you the last thing here. This was kind of what sparked it off. Mike, Michael commented on this. He liked the way this looked and wanted to see, you know, a video. So this little deal here took me about, no lie, maybe 20, 25 minutes to do the whole thing. I was just sitting there and I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll put some stripes on the uh, trail tracker. So what I have right now, and it's pretty much usually what I have in front of me. I have the fast color, quarter inch wide masking tape, which you can get your narrow stripes. And I have just standard half inch wide. Um, actually, this might be three quarter wide. Standard, yeah, it's three quarter, sorry. Three quarter wide masking tape that you buy in a hardware store. And I use that for, you know, bigger stripes or bigger areas. And then you can use paper or whatever. I use very primitive old school technique. You can buy liquid mask and, you know, do all kinds of different stuff. I use newspaper to mask. I use tape. Now, before you do any paint job, you need to make sure that the surface is clean. And what I'm doing here is I have the old cutoffs of the stretch box that I'm going to use as a sample piece to give you guys my technique, how I do it. You start off with your piece. I'm not going to wash this under the sink because you know what that's about. You take ordinary dish soap with water and you wash the whole body off. And then you dry the body off, you let it dry well, and then you spray it off with compressed air. To get, and the idea is to get rid of any dirt, debris, dust, oil on your fingers, grease from something you were working on, your shock oil, and you got oil on it. Dish soap works good because it cuts grease. So it gets rid of any oil and grease that you'll have on your fingertips. If you have a spot that, like say your hands were greasy, you ate pizza or something, and you came down and you touched the body, and then you painted over it, what'll happen is... It's like oil and water, the paint will lift off of the spot and you'll end up with a fish eye, it's called. And that spot, no matter what you do and you try to paint that spot, it will not show up. It'll, it'll, it'll keep lifting and it'll keep lifting and you'll never get it on there. And the only way to fix that is to clean it and start over. So, when you're painting, even strokes with the can, even strokes, meaning you keep a certain distance about, I usually like to go about 8 or 12 inches away, and then you hold the can straight and you and you press the trigger and you dust in even strokes or you're on and off the trigger and you dust a little bit sometimes I do a little tighter like that because just to try to keep the overspray down in that because I do all my painting in the basement and it could sometimes it could start stinking pretty good so but you want to do even same distance strokes anytime you're done painting you tip the can upside down when you're done you hit the trigger you shake it for about a second and a half that cleans out the nozzle. Otherwise, the paint sticks in the nozzle, and then when you go to use it next time, it'll be spattering and spitting, and every once in a while you can get a bad nozzle, and you'll have a killer paint job going, and you go to hit that can, and all of a sudden, pfft, it splatters up your paint job and ruins it, and you gotta start over. That happens too, so even myself, I've been doing painting for probably 35 years, I've been doing model kits and this type of painting, and you still, We'll have times where things will go wrong or you'll mess up or you'll get bleed behind the tape. You'll tape and then behind the tape, there'll be paint run underneath and you'll have to clean it up a little bit. That happens. There's no way to avoid it. You push the tape down the best you can and it can still happen. So don't beat yourself off about it. What I do is if I have a bad spot, if there was a line here that bled, before it's completely dry, I pull the masking tape off. And I take an X-Acto knife like this and I carefully scrape the new paint off before it's real hard. And then I wipe it off and then I scrape the line and wipe it off. And you can clean up lines like that. So that's not the end of the world. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to break away, reposition the camera. 
And what I'm going to start with is a gray base coat. I like to start with a base coat. You could paint right over this white, but I like using a base coat or a primer. It makes the top color look better. And it also gives you an extra added layer of protection on here. And I think it helps basically helps the paint adhere better to the surface. So if you do flip it or, you know, smack it a little bit or something, you have less tendency for the paint to chip off right away. Cause this is a pretty, pretty smooth surface. Some guys you want to take a scotch bright and rough this up, give it a little more, uh, something for the paint to grab, but I'm not going to do that here. Sometimes I do it. Sometimes I don't, I didn't do it on my lunch box and it was fine. I basically cleaned it and primed it right away. So break away, reset the camera up and I'm going to show you the base coat spray. Hey, one thing you want to remember when you're going to paint is you got to shake your can well before you paint. You shake that can up. There's not a lot of paint left in there. This is near the end, but it'll it'll get us through this. You shake that thing, you shake that thing, and you shake that thing, you shake that thing some more, and then you shake it a little bit more. Because the more you shake the can, the better your paint's going to be mixed up, the better it's going to go on, the better it's going to look, the easier it's going to come out of the nozzle because it'll be thinned out. You have to remember that. You want to do a little dance when you're doing this you can do that that's cool whatever you, whatever whatever you want to do you got to get shaken up okay so what we're going to do here is what i always do is i always start and i do a little test blast okay look at see that this can's kind of the end okay see how it wasn't spraying this is the end of, end of the can but i'm going to give you an idea you take your piece you stay about six eight inches away from it and you start dusting it just like that even even coat okay that's one coat right there and th this stuff covers pretty good that's basically one coat and I covered the whole van and this is just a primer so you don't have to get crazy with it but I dusted just like you see that nice and even you can see that on there it's completely covered now that's dry right there that's put on dry you can see it looks kind of bumpy because I just put it on there light that's a light first coat and I'm not going to put a bunch of these coats, but normally I would put, I would do a light first coat and then I would do a heavy. And I'm going to show you a little bit here of a heavy. If you could see that angle, I'm going to spray this. This, this near the end of the can. See how that's getting real heavy right there? That's it. I mean, that's, you could see it. It's real wet. Any more than that, it would run. That's what's hard about painting is you have to get to that point where it's super shiny and wet, but if you go just a little bit more, it's going to run or sag. And once you do that, then you're in, you're in for a whole other set of problems. So over time, this side dry, if you could see that, that side dry, this side wet. It's all on how you apply it. And that's where the hardest part probably with paint comes in, is knowing when to stop and when to continue. Even with cars, when, when my dad was painting cars back in the day and my uncle's, guys would paint cars lacquer and they would put it on super super dry because they were afraid to get runs and then they would rub it out and buff it and then it would look okay but a real painter could put the paint on nice and wet and enamel job and put it on super wet like we're using here this is enamel and get it to look super shiny and nice and even because the painter knows that threshold how far can you go with it how far can you how much paint can you put on there to get that exact point and, it, and that's what you have to work on and you have to practice i can't teach you that over a video but you get to that point and what happens is the paint will flow out so you'll put it on there and then after a few minutes it'll it'll really flow out and you'll see and you can kind of you can kind of see here i mean it's really really shiny but this is a dull finished paint it's a flat finish so when it dries it's going to be flat the top coat is where this really comes into play so we're gonna let this dry sufficiently so I can put a top coat on it and then we'll get back. All right, well, we're letting this dry for a couple minutes. Just kinda of wanna recap and make sure that I'm covering everything. You can see in the angle here, you can see that's put on pretty heavy and it's wet. And the other side where I dusted it on is dry already and it's getting that flat looking finish. And then you can see on the side where it's white and then the gray. So I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera but I'm going to do my best here. Um, I only got a few cans of paint left, really. I've been going through paint like crazy, especially working on that Unimog. 
And I have the blue that I used on the trail tracker, which I got a couple dusts left in the can, which I don't think that's going to work very good. And I just looked through and I have a old red metal flake, old can. This thing is probably a few years old, so I don't even know how this is going to spray. But I'm going to try to use this, see if I can get, can get it to spray, and I'll show you uh, the demo with this. And what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to paint the whole top and sides of this thing with this red and kind of show you. And again, it ha you have to get the feel. And the only way that I could see for you guys to get this down for you, for, for those of you who are not familiar with this, is to take some practice pieces, um, plastic or, you know, whatever you have that paint could stick to. I mean, certain materials you don't want to use because the paint won't even stick to it. It won't give you the right effect. But if you had old model kits or pieces like this, old parts of your bodies or you know whatever pvc plastic would be a good one to use you could take like a piece of pipe and cut a piece and then uh, clean it up real good and scuff it up a little bit with like a scotch bright pad or something wash it and then paint that because that's plastic that'll give you the same same result and um painting bodies from the inside polycarbonate bodies like the unimog where you have to paint from inside because it's clear it's it's very difficult to mask stripes from the inside. It's hard on some bodies. This one isn't bad because it's big. Certain bodies are hard to get in there and do the stripes. It's easier to do them on the outside. But polycarbonate bodies, you don't have to be a good painter to paint them. It's flat paint. There's the gray right there. That's polycarbonate paint. You dust it in there. And then what I do with the polycarbonate is I dust it in there. I'll do a light coat, let it dry, do another coat, let it dry, do another coat. And then I hold it up to the light, and I see where, if any light comes through. If light comes through, then I know I need to put more paint on there. But you could lay it on super heavy. You could get sags, runs in the inside. And when you look at the outside and you peel the clear protective layer off, it's going to look super, super shiny because you're painting from underneath, and, you're, and you're actual, the clear body is what's showing. You don't have to be a good painter to do the inside. Where the technique comes into play is the ABS body, like the lunchbox or the midnight pumpkin or you know any hard plastic body that you have to paint from the outside is where it gets challenging. That's where you really see your finish. You can cover a lot with a polycarbonate body from the inside. You can also brush the inside of these bodies. They have spray and they have brush as well. If you don't have a place where you could spray or it's too cold and you can't do it outside or whatever, you can use brush paint and mask and brush them. My Hornet, the first one I did, I brushed. So you can do that. And again, the top side's still going to look awesome because it's behind the clear and the clear is always going to look super shiny no matter what you do on the underside. This is the actual paint there. It's all dull. This is the paint. When you look at it from the top side, obviously you can't on this one because I changed it. But let me try to give you an example here. Let me pull another uh, body for you. This is an old, old paint job here, but just to give me an example. This was an old spray polycarbonate, same thing. Underneath, it's just kind of dull, dull looking finish. But when you look at it from the top side, it looks super, super shiny because you're actually just looking at the plastic. This is easy. You could botch this up, mess this up, you know, start off with a single color first. Don't try doing multiple colors and stripes and some guys do it and they, they have a good time and they, it works out and it does well. But for a guy that's just starting, that's never painted before, I recommend going with the basic single color. All right, this side is still drying a little bit. This side is completely dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one little stripe down the middle just to show you. I'm going to use the quarter inch. And this is fast color brand tape, but you can use any kind. Say you wanted to run a stripe. I don't, I don't lay any of my stripes out with tape measures and get all crazy. I just do it all by eye. I put it on there. I look at it. If it needs to be moved, I move it a little bit. You know, it's not that critical. It is critical, but if you have a good enough eye that you can eyeball stuff, just like I put that down there, I, I laid it out kind of the center of the ribs just by my eye. If you're not comfortable with your eye and, you, you know, you have a hard time, you can measure it out, but it takes longer. So I just put... One little piece of tape in the center of these two ribs right down the middle to give you an idea. And then what will happen is once I paint the top coat, I'll pull it off after a few minutes and show you. And see if there's any bleed through, I'll show you how to clean it up. So you put it on there and you squeeze it down real good. And you do this maybe four or five times. 
because if you have the tape sticking up just a little bit on the side or whatever, that paint is going to find a way to run in underneath there, and you're going to have a crummy-looking line. And it happens to everyone. It happens to me, and it happens to the best of them. So don't get discouraged if you get bleed-through, because it is a common thing, and sometimes it's out of your control. It just happens. So we have a little stripe there. A couple more seconds of air drying this thing, and I'm going to blast. Probably a little premature. You should wait a little longer when you're going to do this. I Generally what I do is I'll put full couple coats, two, three coats of the gray on, and then I'll let it sit for 24 hours. I'll let it sit all night till the following night, and then I'll dust it off again, and I'll put the top coat on. I don't, I don't do this all in one shot or wait 15 minutes and put the top coat on. It's a good practice to be patient, take your time, wait another night, wait two nights, whatever it takes, till you feel like you have the time to put into it because it is a patience thing. If you rush any of these steps whatsoever, you will implode and have a hard time. Anytime I try to rush something and I go too fast, it always ends up getting messed up. So allot yourself time, take the time, look at it. The other thing is if you wanna do stripes, think about what you wanna do before you do it. Don't just grab the tape and slap it on there and then all of a sudden you put the paint job together and you're like, oh man, those stripes look like garbage, I don't want them. Think about it a little bit. Sometimes you can go on a whim and just put something on, but think about what you're doing because in the end result, you're spending money on paint, you're spending money on bodies. If you do ruin the body and you can't um, recover from it, chances are the body are 30, 40, 50 bucks you're spending on these things. So you don't want to ruin those and the cans are getting expensive now. These cans of paint are five, six, seven, eight dollars a can now. And you can only, usually out of a can, you're lucky if you get one car done, one 10 scale vehicle. So take your time, think about what you want to do, execute the task. Again, patience, patience, patience. All right, YouTubers, shaking the can, shaking the can, shaking the can, shaking the can, can't shake the can too much. Remember that. So, I've been shaking this for a few minutes here, and I'm going to get ready and try to test this out. I don't know how this nozzle is. This is an old can. It's been sprayed before. Yep, it's completely locked up. See, I can't even push it down. So that's going to be a junk can. I'm going to have to try the last little bit of blue that I have left. I wish I had more paint here, but I'm running down to the end of everything. The only thing I have left is polycarbonate, and that's not going to give you... Let me see if I can swap nozzles. Sometimes you can swap nozzles with another color if you got a good nozzle, as long as it's the same paint. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So this nozzle will work. So now what you do is... The key is light, too. That's what I forgot to mention. Lots of light. Especially when you start getting a little older like myself. My eyes, eyes aren't as good as they were 10 years ago. So the more light, the better. I Unfortunately, I don't have the best light in here. I will some at some point, but I don't now. So I always use the light. I use the angle of the light to see what, what you're painting. Because unless you're in the angle of the light where the light reflects off the side and you're looking you know, dead on or you're looking where, where it's a shadow, you're not going to be able to tell what you're doing. So I always angle to the light so I can see. And then they start dusting. Nice even stroke. Just dust it all over. See that? Pretty good distance away. And normally I would do light coats, but I'm going to do this all in one for you. See how nice and deep it's getting? Oh, that's pretty. Now, we're getting to the point. I don't know if you can see this or not. You're, it's flowing now. You're, we're getting to the point where it's heavy. I'm going to do a little bit on the side because the top is different than the side too because you have the gravity effect on the side. Wants to pull the paint out, so I'm going to dust this. See how I'm going? On and off the trigger. I'm going to put it on there. I'm laying it on pretty heavy now. And then you get to that point where, oh, it's flowing out really nice. It's looking really good, but I'm going to go over this one more time. This is just to finish real quick, heavy. I'm looking at the angle of the light. Oh yeah, looks like glass. To the point where it gets flat, where you don't see any orange peel effect whatsoever. I'm gonna dust a tiny bit more on the back. I don't wanna get crazy with it. Cause it's looking pretty, that's it right there. No more. I don't wanna go any more than what I got right there. If I go any more than that, I'm gonna have runs. You're gonna go too much and you're gonna ruin it. That right now, I don't know if I hope the camera is catching, but that looks like fantastic. It's perfect. It's like glass. That's what you want. It looks like you splash water, even coat of water all over the, all over the job. That's what you want. 
I don't see any spots where I don't see any dirt spots really that's the other thing if you don't clean good enough make sure there's a couple tiny spots in there if you don't clean enough you'll get particles in there dust particles that will stick out in the paint and the one good good thing about it, if you're doing a final top coat like this and you're gonna leave it well you're gonna see the dirt if you have a little bit of dirt in like that once it dries and you let it dry for a day or two you can wet sand it lightly and then clear coat it and you get rid of the dirt and make sure you clean it you know for your final the lunchbox the pink one is just top coat there's no clear most of the time I don't use clear but you can use clear after this is done you can put clear coat on there two or three coats of clear and really get it to shine up on my deadbolt roll cage I did base coat like three coats and I did six coats of clear on it to give it like a protective barrier in case I chipped it or hit it it wouldn't take the you know the, the top coat off like the red wouldn't come off just the clear would chip and the red would stay intact so you can see this here super 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 shiny no runs no sags right here you're looking at the tape that's going down so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry for about 10 minutes or so 15 minutes you can see it's super super wet looks like glass looks like water I'm gonna peel the tape back and show you the line now okay we're back here and uh, it's been drying about 10 minutes or something so I'm gonna give you a look at this hopefully this is showing up in the camera I laid it on final heavy on the top now you should the proper technique is to do light coats like this light dustings let it dry come back do another light dusting let it dry you can see this is drier here you can see that there that's wet 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 and it looks awesome and nice and deep because of the base coat when you're painting the side and it's white it just the white comes through it doesn't work as well so you want to use the base color like that for sure underneath gray I, I like to use light gray or dark gray under every color that I paint but you could get the idea there just I mean that looks awesome and I laid it on heavy in the first shot and I don't recommend that like I said you need to go and do at least a couple coats to get the color on there and then the last coat or if you want to do one coat and then go back and do the heavy top coat that's what you do for the final to get it nice and wet and shiny like that but I don't recommend doing that like I just did but I'm trying to speed it, speed it up so you get the idea okay now we're gonna peel our tape back and there you go there's your stripe and in this stripe there's absolutely no bleed through on that stripe whatsoever it's a perfectly perfectly clean line so you just need to take your time practice hopefully this video helped you guys out to give you a little technique if you guys have any other questions for me at all you know I'm always willing to help out the best I can I'm not an expert I don't claim to be an expert uh, you know, I do this for fun. I enjoy it. And uh, I appreciate all the good comments that everybody gives on the stuff that I do do. I appreciate it. It means a lot. And the fact that somebody would want me to make a video on this process is cool. And I'm happy to bring it to you. So that's it. That's Painting 101, the way Rich from 2RC Productions does it. There's a lot of guys that have different techniques, but this is the way I like to use. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Um once again thanks for always uh hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing and all the support is tremendous we're at like 1241 subscribers at the time of this video and that's it man thanks a lot for the support and we'll see you next time rich from 2rc production out.